New Zealand are the land of swing and seam. Their home to the pace of Leah Tehuhu, the swing of Jess Carr, the accuracy of Holly Huddleston, and the smarts of Rosemary Mel. But over the last couple of decades, New Zealand has also been home to some of the world's best spinners. Today on Beyond the Boundary, we're in conversation with one of the best white ball bowlers in the women's game, Lee Kasparik. Well, um, hi Lee, thanks, thanks for joining us today. Um, it's lovely to have you. Uh, thanks very much for having me. Yep. Um, so I'm just you've had a you've had a very significant career for the for the white ferns and it began a little over six years ago. So, but I'm going to take you back um, to the very beginning. Um, you grew up in in Edinburgh in Scotland. So, can you kind of tell us how cricket became a part of your life? Um, well, I guess it was a bit unexpected. Um, growing up, I played a lot of sports. Um, tennis was my number one, my favorite. Um, and it just kind of came about that there was a boys cricket team that started in my school and it was compulsory that they had to have one girl to enter the quick cricket tournament so I got roped in and then it kind of went from there and just played because I really enjoyed playing with the boys and then um, was really lucky uh, when I was around 16 um, there was an Edinburgh State Schools um, initiative that started so me again along with eight boys kind of got taken in and um under the wing of um Gordon Drummond who was the Scotland captain at the time and he kind of like developed our cricket from there so that's I guess how it started. Awesome um, and you played for or you made your debut for Scotland as a teenager and, and played for them for quite a while um so what do you remember of your stint uh, playing for Scotland and the European 11 as well? Yeah, um, I guess it's always a proud moment when you're representing your country. Um, I've been lucky enough to do it with both Scotland and New Zealand. Um, I guess with Scotland, the most of the memories that I have are probably off the field um, and the friendships that I've made during that time. Um, I'm still really close with a lot of the girls. And um, in 2011, you took a risk and went off to Perth and um, you followed that up and, and played in New Zealand for Wellington. Um, so a couple of questions, the first being what prompted you to take that risk um, and, and then why did you proceed to stay in New Zealand and the second would be, you know, how much, um, uh, how big an impact do you think it had on your development as a, as a player? Yeah, um, I'll start with the last one. Um, I think it had a massive um, impact on my development, probably as a cricketer and as a person. Um, I left um, not long after school. Um, I had the opportunity in, in Perth, Australia, um, just through a contact. It was the Dutch national coach was coaching the um, state team in Perth. So he wanted to try and get someone over from an associate country to get involved and saw it as a development opportunity. So it was really just by chance. And again, similar thing happened when I went to New Zealand. Um, I met a coach. Um, and again, he gave me an opportunity to come out to New Zealand. So um, I pounced on that. Um, he's actually now coaching Scotland, um, Mark Coles. So um, yeah, I mean, I've been very lucky throughout my career. Just sometimes opportunities arise and it's taken me to Australia and then in New Zealand um, where I've settled and I absolutely love it. As soon as I got over there, I just fell in love with the country. and um haven't left <laughs> yep and um at wa you met susie bates i think um, if i'm not wrong and and then um you played with her uh, in otago for a long time as well she was also your first new zealand captain so um can you tell me about how big an impact she's had on your career yeah susie's had a really big impact on my career um i guess obviously meeting her in perth the star and then heading over and playing for Otago um, with her for I think about three seasons before with the New Zealand staff um, and she's just I'm sure it's no surprise to most people but she's quite an inspiring person and you know for me coming from little Scotland and playing all of a sudden with one of the best cricketers in the world at that time and one of the greatest leaders um, it, it just felt pretty special I still feel 
like privileged to be playing with her whenever I get the opportunity, if it's New Zealand or whatever. So yeah, no, it's been really awesome um, playing with Suze and, you know, on the field, she's been great, but off the field as well, she's been a real mentor um, to me. And um, yeah, I really appreciate Suze. And um, in 2015, you got your White Ferns call up made your, your debut for New Zealand uh, in India. Um, what do you remember of that tour? Is there like a particular memory on the field, off the field? Because you were very successful, picked up a big wicket to kick off your career. Um, so what are your memories of that tour? Yeah, um, probably similar. And just the fact that you, you remember kind of the things that happen off the field, you know, like um, everything when you're on the field happens so quickly and it all kind of feels like a bit of a blur. and. Um, but no, to be making my debut for New Zealand was something I never thought would happen. Um, but it was really special, especially in a country like India, where there was, everyone loves cricket. It was just, it was amazing for it to happen. Um, but yeah, I just reflect on the things and, you know, the people that you meet, the memories that you make on and off the field. Um, I think it was the same tour that Sophie made her, the world's fastest T20 um, 50. Um, so just to be a part of that and just to be a part of the team for the first time, um, yeah, it was really special to be a part of it. Um, and so, well, since your debut in 2015, you've kind of, you've come a long way, kind of established yourself as, as a key member of, of the White Ferns bowling attack. Um, what has that transformation been for, been like for you? But um, more importantly, I think through those first couple of years, was there a performance that made you feel like you belonged? Um, at that level or was it just a consistent performances over those couple of years that that helped build confidence in you? Um, I think I was really lucky um, at the start of my career I had um, a bit of success but I think I always kind of looked at that success as luck um, and kind of was wondering when it probably was going to stop. Um, I think probably the year of 2018 um, was a big year for me um, just feeling like I was putting performances out which were helping contribute to our team winning matches and um, being able to stay on the park for a little bit longer not breaking my fingers so just having that real consistent year of playing cricket and feel like I was contributing and kind of I guess understanding my bowling a little bit better and um, just kind of embracing it a bit more. Um, yeah, I feel like the 2018 year was um, a big one for me. We had West Indies at home, followed by a long tour to Ireland and England. Um, and then the T20 World Cup at the end of the year. Um, so, um, you know, at the start of your career, you, you built a, a really strong partnership, especially in that T20 World Cup with Morna Nielsen and um, Aaron Birmingham. And, and since 2017, both you and Amelia Kerr have kind of um, been New Zealand's spin twins. Um, just looking back at, at those two partnerships, one, what's what's been the difference in terms of your role um, in those partnerships? And, um, you know, how has each kind of helped you I suppose, develop as a bowler or, or kind of um, learn new skills or, or tactics? Yeah, um, I think New Zealand's done really well in the last 10 years, maybe longer, of developing really talented, successful spin bowlers. So when you talk about the likes of Morna and Erin and Amelia, but also you know, Anna Peterson's been in the mix for a, a while as well. And then so is Frankie Mackay, and she's unfortunately not here on this tour either with um, injury. And then also looking to um, Fran Jonas, who's coming through in the future. Um, with regards to Morna and Erin, though, I think they're just really smart bowlers. Um, they're really smart, consistent, successful. So for me to um, start my career kind of under them and learning from, from them, um, it was just trying to ask as many questions as I could and just kind of try and soak up their experience. Um, and then since Melee coming into the team in 2017, um, we get on pretty well um, on and off the field and just again, kind of just challenging each other and learning off each other and um, probably the same goal. She's a smart cricketer. Um, so just, yeah, we're having those conversations together as to what we can do on the field. It's probably helped our bowling. 
Well, um, so you did mention, you know, kind of coming to terms with the style of your bowling and things like that. You, you are not the biggest turner of the ball. You are, but but you are one of the more tactically astute players in the women's game, and and that kind of reflects in your success uh, for New Zealand. Um, how did you develop that ability to to read the game so quickly? I mean, is it instinctive or is it? Or are you very meticulous with your planning? Um, do you like watch a lot of videos and, and analyze battles a lot before the game, or, or is it something you just do on the field? Um, I think it's probably a bit of a combination of everything. Um, I try and watch as much cricket as I can, um, whether we're playing, whether we're not playing, whether it's international cricket, domestic cricket. Um, hmm. I guess a lot of it is on the field though. Um, I try and go with my gut, um, try and take the more attacking option. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I just hope it works more often than it doesn't. Um, but I guess that's the thing with spin bowling. Like you do kind of, it is a little bit of a game of chess and you do have opportunity to set people up. And um, that's one of the reasons that I love bowling spin is for that. You've played under all three of New Zealand's wise women, as they call themselves, um, Susie Bates, Amy Sadduth. Well, okay. that's what, well, um, Amy Sadduth said it in an interview, so I'm just kind of um, putting it out there. Um, yeah, Susie Bates, Amy Sadduth and Sophie Devine. Uh, what are each of them like as captains? And I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask who you enjoy playing under, don't worry. No, 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 that's, that's fair. Um, I actually think probably the wise woman is quite a good name for them. Um, I think we've been really lucky in the past few years, whether they're captaining, not captaining, whatever's going on, just to have them around the group um, and then to obviously have the three of them leading. Um, each time they've done it, they've been exceptional um, and they kind of just bring like a little bit different, um, a little bit of um, things different to each of their styles. but like the passion they have, the experience, um, their love of the white fans, their love of the game really shines through. Um, I think off the field as well, like I think Amy especially, like having Grace and then coming back um, into the game has been really inspirational and we love having Grace around and she's great at the moment when we're in a bubble. Um, and then you've obviously got Sophie who's excelled um, on the field, um, especially in T20 cricket. But then I think the way that she's spoken so openly about mental health the last few years has been really massive. Um, and I think it's really important um, that the conversation gets had. Um, and then, you know, you look to Susie, who's done it for numerous years and it's a massive, I think she's gonna go down as one of the greatest cricketers in New Zealand. Um, and there's a massive inspiration for everyone off the field as well. So i um, been really lucky to play under and with all three of them. Um, so you've had an opportunity to kind of play in, in some T20 leagues. You were part of the KSL playing for Yorkshire Diamonds and, and then in the Women's T20 Challenge as well. Um, how helpful are those experiences of, of playing in different conditions and um, with other international players? Yeah, they're really helpful. Um, I think that's why so many of the girls do them. Um, you know, like Big Bash draws all the big names for the for the women. It's just it's an opportunity to play with new people, learn from new coaches, learn from new players. I, I think that was probably one of the biggest things in the women's T20 challenge um, was meeting people like Shikha Pandey, who I previously hadn't talked to, and just learning how she goes about things and. You know, I mean, so much talent in India right now with the young cricketers. Um, I mean, you look at their T20 squad that they recently put out against England, and I don't know what the average age was, but it was must have been low twenties. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I think there like there's massive scope for hopefully a women's IPL in the future. Um, me and some of the other girls were just discussing like the amount of talent that was just sitting on the sidelines and how we really wished that we could have got the opportunity to see them play. But yeah, I think it's just awesome playing in different conditions under different coaches and with different people. And uh, so you did touch upon Sophie talking about mental health and, and being in bubbles. I mean, the last 18 months or so, uh, we've been, or 
players have been exclusively playing out of bubbles. I mean, you spend like several weeks in hotels, sometimes even months. So, um, you know, how have you kind of managed to keep yourself, I suppose, in a healthy space um, with all the restrictions around you? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot about coming up with a plan. So, like, what does each day look like for you? And um, routine for a lot of people is really important. Um, I mean, at the moment, we feel particularly lucky that although we're in a bubble, um, like New Zealand right now has gone back into lockdown. So um, the freedom that we're actually getting to train and, and play a sport that we love, um, yeah, we feel really fortunate about that. Um, we're obviously in this bubble at the moment um, and the ECB have been fantastic. Um, so we feel very safe and secure, but I guess the bubble's never that easy, but um, it's something that's just a part of life at the moment. And there's a lot of things going on. So the fact that we're getting the opportunity to come over and play cricket in England, we just feel really fortunate for. Mm -hmm. And um, so what do you do outside the training and play, playing? How do you keep yourself busy? I did hear that, well, in Dubai, I heard that you were studying. Um, so is that something you're still doing? Um, I am going to keep continuing on with um, the study. Um, we've had, I think we're going to have some quizzes. We've had some challenges while we're here. Um, we've got an Xbox up and running, cards. Um, we're really fortunate we, as a playing group, get on really well, um, as we do with the staff. Um, so as like a collective unit with the white phones, there's actually quite a lot to do. There's a running group going on at the moment. Um, like I said, we just feel really lucky about the fact that we're actually getting out and about and being able to do the things that we love. But yeah, outside, we're just trying to keep entertained and make sure that you also get the time that you need just to take a break as well. Mm -hmm. And now looking ahead to, to the series against England, um, you are the lead spinner in the absence of, of Amelia Kerr and, and Frankie McKay. Um, so do you feel any additional pressure going into the series or are you just kind of um, gonna take, take it as it comes? Um, I don't think I feel any additional pressure. It's obviously unfortunate that Amelia and Frankie and, and Fran um, aren't able to be here. Um, but I think, you know, like we've had really good training for the last week. Um, the bowling group have been looking really good. Um, and hopefully come game time, um, everyone will be ready to perform. Um, and have you set yourself set yourself any goals for the series, any milestones that you want to take off? Or is that not something that you do? Um, not something that I do. Um, I guess as a team, we're just looking towards the World Cup, really, like to have a home World Cup is really exciting. So we see these three matches, the um, T20s coming up, followed by the five one days is really important um, building up to that World Cup um, in February, March. Um, yeah, that was great. Well, thanks. Thanks for your time. Lee. It was awesome chatting. No, with thanks you. very much for having me. Yeah, and, and good luck uh, for the for the series. Hope it goes well. Thank you. I hope we do well too. <laughs> yeah, yeah.